Welcome to Art and Objects' most recent auction, the estate of Michael Ellingworth. We're on view now and every day until the auction this Thursday the 14th of September at 6.30pm. As many of you know, over the past 10 years of Art and Objects history, we've offered some very exciting and special collections, but the opportunity to work with the Ellingworth family has to be one of the highlights. I guess it was with some surprise that we took a phone call one day from the Illingworth family inviting us to come down to the farm and see them about the possibility of selling the collection. I guess for many of us, although Illingworth's paintings have been iconic and present in many of the amazing collections that we've offered over recent years, the artist himself has been something of an enigma and someone who many of us didn't know that much about. Some of the more famous images of him involve him not wanting to speak to media or, or take part in publicity. So the paintings have spoken for themselves up until this time when we've had the opportunity to present his work in a slightly different light. The exciting part about this auction is that we feel we've got almost a mini retrospective of Illingworth's productivity right through from the self-portrait dated about 1958 to uh, some paintings that were completed not long before he died in the late 80s. Ben and Hamish will tell you about some of their highlights in the collection and we really hope that you enjoy coming to learn a little bit more about one of New Zealand's most iconic painters. One of the things that's been really interesting since the catalogue was published more than a week ago is people asking us, what's our favourite work? Which work do we enjoy the most? Which work speaks to us? And I think that's a, a reaction that we've had maybe more than any other catalogue that we've published, is that people are really seeking to interact with the works on a really personal basis. And I think one of the reasons for that is that we've had the rare opportunity to have access to an incredible amount of archival material, whether it's from the Māori Freelander archive of photographs, that is housed at the Auckland Art Gallery and we're very thankful to Jared Friedlander for giving his permission for us to reproduce those images in the catalogue, but also an incredible body of letters, photographs, catalogues from the 1960s and 70s that have been kept by the Illingworth family for decades. And that information, much of which we publish in the catalogue, has really given us an incredible insight into Michael Illingworth's worldview and of course the individual works that reflect that worldview. One of the works that has struck everybody is this wonderful smaller canvas here from 1971, Tomb of Seahorse. It's very much the sister work to a key work by Michael Ellingworth that's housed in the Te Papa collection. One of the things that I really love about this work is that the tomb itself is indicated here, written by Michael Ellingworth, that that is the coastal cave and that is the tomb of the seahorse. We see one of his classic figures there, this time uh, in half, suggesting that we have a tableur that continues perhaps down the coast. And at this time, in the early 1970s, of course, it's tempting to think that this is the coast out from Parkery Beach up towards Kauwau, looking out towards Little Barrier Island, Hatudu. There's another wonderful work in this collection which features a similar coastal scene. But this work here, I feel, is really almost like a Michelin guide to Michael Illingworth's practice. And it's really lovely to get up close to this to see the endlessly worked layers and glazes on this that makes this canvas absolutely sing. It's hard to know where to start with the show or how to pick out one or two works that really feels like, in a way, one giant work, one very generous part of Michael Illingworth's project. But one work I think that I would like to pick out and talk about is just this one behind me because it's such a jovial, joyous, exuberant, ebullient, wonderful shot of colour and life and it feels like there's so much promise in it and so much happiness in it that for me it really sticks out. It's called Painting with Rainbow for obvious reasons. It dates to 1965. It's part of a small series. Interestingly enough, there's another work entitled Painting with Rainbow in the collection of Auckland Art Gallery. But when I look at it, I really like to think of it as almost like a self-portrait of Michael Illingworth. Here is the little figure down in front that uh, populates the bottom half of the canvas, surrounded by this beautiful shroud of colour and warmth and sunshine. And then in the top two quadrants we've got here, we've got something far more interesting going on formally. In the top right corner, we've got this bubble with another one of his uh, Tara or, or icon figures rendered in a very sort of matte or charcoal colourway. And then on the left, this, this wonderful, strange, abstract form that feels like it could be 
uh, constellation in the sky, the Southern Cross may be punctuated here through these four limpet shells, and then this hook feels like it could be something also found maybe in Maori cave art or in rock design or something else that many people were looking at at the time. But for me, one of the most action-packed, interesting formally, but also most generative and happy works in the show. Ben, Lee and myself have visited the Illingworth family property in Corriglen, uh, in the middle of the Coromandel Ranges, a number of times over the last five or six months. And of course, when we first started working with the family, we were familiar with Michael Illingworth, the painter. Uh, but one of the revelations of this collection is Michael Illingworth, sculptor. So it was with real surprise and joy that we saw this figure as Adam and Eve from the mid-1960s on our first arrival to the family property. This work is really an iconic sculpture by Michael Illingworth and it really goes to the heart of that mid-60s practice, of course, because this is in three dimensions, in hermaphrodite form, male and female, yin and yang. Linda Tyler's written a wonderful essay in the catalogue. Is a work that is really the embodiment of the Adam and Eve figures in that famous painting that is now in the Tapapa collection. With this Adam and Eve figure, we are transported right back to that Barry Lett exhibition in 1965, that controversial exhibition when Michael Illingworth, the artist, hit the headlines, the police were called in, outraged citizens had been shocked by the frank displays of male and female genitalia. I think we can get with this figure some sense of the frankness, the candour of Illingworth's practice that would have been shocking to some 50 years ago in Auckland. A topic of great debate internally here at Art and Object is this, uh, this yellow wall, this canary yellow wall. I think it's absolutely fantastic. We've pulled out one of the colours that you'll find in quite a lot of Michael Illingworth's paintings and we've really charged the room with a shot of colour and life and what better thing to hang on it than this uh, absolutely exquisite little 1971 three-dimensional box. It's entitled Tara. It's got the most fantastic history, I think, just about of anything in the show. Went to Headlands in the early 1990s, a great survey show of New Zealand art in Sydney. You'll find it in the Tourist and Lost catalogue as well. And I think Illingworth is that wonderful quote where he says, I'm painting my own little world, a world against the hypocritical suburbia. This feels like a literal manifestation of that quote, really. Wonderful Tara figure set there within a suburban window with the flower pot out the front. And in the background, if you look closely, you'll just find the most exquisite little Illingworth landscape. For those of you that take the time to come down and have a look at the Illingworth show, you will find we've provided a really interesting counterpoint to the Michael Illingworth Estate Collection. Hung through in our annex is selected highlights from our next auction on October 31st, the collection of the American Glenn Schaefer. It really is going to be something entirely unprecedented for the New Zealand art market. You're going to see many figures who turn up at auction in New Zealand relatively regularly. Modernists like Milan Mirkozic, Gordon Walters, Ralph Hotary, through to more contemporary painters like Shane Cotton, Julian Dashba. But what you're going to see them in is in the collection and the context of someone with a truly international and very sophisticated eye. You'll encounter works by people like Winston Rothe, Aboriginal paintings by people like McNamari Jakuljari and Kathleen Pachari, as well as American modernists like Donald Judd, Carl Benjamin, through contemporary works by people like Jenny Holzer, the likes of which you'll never see in this country on the art market before, and maybe you'll never see them again. So come on down, we've got some wonderful highlights from Glenn Schaefer's collection, and uh, that sale will be in the latter stages of October.